Thank you very much. Um, so, some uh, brilliant presentations so far, and I think you'll find there's some recurring themes that I'm going to reinforce as well through my presentation, but that's more by accident by um, deliberate planning ahead of game. Um, so, I'm going to talk about the key success factor for an effective governance programme. Um, so, um, I'm the Data Information Manager in uh, National Grid UK. I sit in a UK centralised data team, uh, independent of the rest of the, the lines of uh, business. Um, I'll talk about, a bit more about the structure of the businesses in the National Grid section, but the background in the context of the business and the organisation that I operate in. Um, I want to introduce some of the you know, more standard critical success factors you have for delivering any sort of change, whether it's data governance or any other change you can have. But I want to use that as a basis to then talk about some of the, the real life experiences we've had in National Grid on this journey, um, but then actually work through those experiences to explain why I think this more particular factor that I think is the critical success factor for success. Um, and then if we can take questions at the end, it'd be great. So, a bit about National Grid, what the business do we do? Um, we're a global energy company, uh, operations in both the, the UK and the US. We've got uh, 24,000 employees globally. Uh, we've just announced our 1516 financial results. Uh, we've had an operating profit of uh, 4.1 billion pounds for the group. And we invested a record level of 3.9 billion pounds capex across the group, so uh, significant scale of operation. Looking more specifically at the uh, UK business, uh, we are particularly highly regulated under Ofgen, um, and that's a theme that, that comes out uh, and, and, and really shouts out the importance to us of data. Um, as a electricity transmission business across the UK. Uh, we've got a transmission network in England and Wales, uh, but we operate uh, but don't own the Scottish networks. Um, so the electricity transmission operation is characterised by the, the power lines you see, your overhead lines, your substations, that sort of uh, big scale asset. Um, up in the top right is a picture of our gas transmission uh, pipeline network. We've got over 7,000 kilometres of high pressure pipeline uh, crisscrossing the UK. Gas distribution business, I didn't put a picture for them, but uh, they interface between the high pressure transmission systems and uh, the homes and businesses that use them. Um, and then we've got a set of non regulated businesses. Um, dealing with the interconnectors that manage the energy flow between us and Europe and uh, metering business and a liquid natural gas uh, importation terminal and storage facility down in Kent. So quite a broad mix of uh, operations there. But for the purposes of this presentation, I'm just going to focus on our UK business, which is my area of interest. So, uh, any textbook on change management, change delivery will quote um, you know, specific success factors that are actually key for ensuring sort of sustained uh, change and, and you know, successful delivery of a, of a change programme. Um, people quote different things, I think it's particular to an organisation type, the culture that's there, individual people's experiences and the type of change that they're going to deliver, but as a, a broad brush. Typically, I think these are the success factors that people would uh, commonly quote. So, sponsorship, you do need the right level of sponsorship at the right level, if somebody else brought that out. Um, you need that direct involvement, you need to be able to get the right steers, the right decisions made, you know, have the right route for escalation when you reach a, reach a bit of an impasse. Scope management, absolutely key. If you want a predefined scope, you don't want this idea of scope creep or people sitting back and saying, what was it we were trying to achieve, you know, what was it we were after? Um, so scope is quite key. Um, bringing in the right resources to deliver change, about having the right high performing team, suppliers, whichever way you're delivering the change, um, you need that good sense of morale, focus of effort, making sure that uh, you've got the right means for, for delivering change. Um, business change readiness, I think that's really about 
making sure that the business has got the capacity to absorb and take on the change that you're proposing, no matter how good an idea you've got or you know the good rationale behind the change program. Um, the, the business has got to have the capacity to absorb that alongside all the other changes doing and it's business as usual operation. So uh, this needs to check. There's the traditional governance and controls for any project program, um, making up a, you know, a decent plan, managing risks and issues, having the right budget management, cost control, etc. Um, and then I think it's probably quite uh, no brainer, but success criteria in there. Being really clear what does success look like at the end of the programme, and where to stop basically, uh, and what benefits you're going to try and track and realise through the delivery of change. So I wasn't going to go into deep dives on each of these, uh, but I want to refer back to this, this picture as we go through to actually bring out um, where we felt the pain or success of each of these uh, in some of our uh, programmes. So, going into data governance specifically, um, back in 2012, our National Grid Chairman uh, raised a challenge and actually said, can I have some assurance, please, that we're not going to get any data-related incidents, bad press, etc., etc. That assurance was uh, not particularly forthcoming very quickly, uh, so a project was born called the Information Management Framework. Um, we brought in uh, one of the top five consultancies to work with us. Um, they went out and actually called on best practice, um, you know, consulted widely across the business. Uh, they produced reams of materials. Uh, we've got some fantastic maturity matrices, uh, 12 information management principles, four information management objectives, some really nice glosses and you know, brochures <coughs> telling everybody what they need to do, uh, what they need to be aware of, and how critical the data was. Um, there was a, a governance board set up, we got the right project controls. You know, so at the surface, you know, it looked like we were doing the right thing. However, to go back to the success factors, I think the one uh, in AMBER scope management, I, I don't, I'd kind of go back to Amber because um, it's fine creating what was, was good practice and defining a good framework. Uh, the scope actually didn't involve the implementation. So we didn't have a handover of this project to another project to see through implementation. We just got a nice framework defined and ready to go. So I don't think quite, either the scope of this project needs to be clear and extended to implementation <coughs> another follow up project. Uh, this is with the benefit of hindsight, bear in mind, but anyway, it's, it's worth uh, sharing. Sponsorship, I've put in there, top left, yes, we had a sponsor, um, but it was in name, and not particularly in drive and direction. The other factor uh, was that the sponsor was an IT uh, senior manager, not business, and yet the whole message here was that business take ownership of your data, get a hand on it, get a grip. So, uh, to be quite honest, the business is quite sceptical about having taken receipts and instructions on a project that had been led by IT, so it didn't get down very well. Um, success criteria, I think probably we didn't actually judge that well enough. Um, success was we got to the end, we got a framework. Success should have been about what was the difference, the action on the ground, what was the difference it's going to make in reality to our true operation. So, um, yeah, so we've gone through the right motions, done the right type of things, but actually not properly addressed each of those success factors. Um, so the project came to an end. Um, the push was then down into the lines of business in the UK. And uh, business, get your plans put together, deliver this framework, it's all good for us practice, don't argue, get on with it. And obviously there's quite a push back from the individual lines of business because um, there was, there was Arguments around, well, we have got the capacity, uh, it's not my business priority, it's not my business plan, you know, and there are <coughs> various reasons why basically implementation didn't actually flow. So we weren't where we needed to be, um, and the nice business carried on doing the best we could. So, what followed on was some um, quite 
senior conversations at exec level. And uh, I think that some of the themes of these conversations helps to explain how we actually turn the corner and start to uh, make turn this thing around. So I think I'd call some of these conversations really sort of penny drop moments so that through the, through the dialogue with some of our exec, um, they actually got what this was about. So one of the themes was, um, hang on, um, we, we were saying, we're not doing the right thing, we've got to do more in this space. We've got to get the formal data management capability out there into the business. And the response back from Exec was, well, I've got armies of people doing things. There's lots of activity going on. I've got task forces, I've got projects collecting data, I've got um, projects of working groups fixing things. And yet, still getting incidents, and you're still telling me that you're not doing the right stuff. So this conversation actually let us then have a pretty mature, <laughs> challenging conversation, I guess, uh, to say, well, actually, this is all short-term issue resolution. We see an issue, we review it, we then go and try and fix that particular issue, we close that problem out, close out that working group. And then, hey-ho, another issue pops up, we go and fix that one, you know, we do all that, and, and what we're doing we're just a continuous cycle of short-term problem resolution and it's point fixes for point problems. And yeah, it, people will report to, to exec, we're doing masses of stuff, but actually, is it the right stuff? So the argument that we then made was, was actually we need to balance. What we really need is as an issue arises, start to look at root causes. And I, I know, um, he mentioned root causes, but this, this actually makes people sit up and listen. So we say, look, look at the root causes, and then actually, if you start to address the root cause, you'll eliminate the source of some of our issues. Instead of just doing point resolution, you're going to eliminate the triggers that's making some of these issues pop up. Um, and they seem to hit home. You could see, you know, dawn, dawning moments uh, in some of these conversations. Um, so we said, look at root causes, and actually, there's some common themes in these root causes, and I'll, I'll go on and explain this uh, a bit more. Um, so in, in summary, we were trying to highlight, stop, let's stop being so reactive, let's be a bit more proactive. Let's stop, do, stop dealing with the short term and focus all our efforts on the short term. Stop to think about the longer term, enduring things that's going to make a difference. And uh, the analogy we made was um, firefighters and fire prevention. So we reward, uh, in, in this group, we've been rewarding all these people that have been stamping out these individual issues. So what here is, these firefighters, and actually we're not giving enough recognition and support to the people, they're actually promoting fire prevention. In other words, put the things in place that stop these issues coming in the first place. So, you know, can we just get the right balance of these things. Um, and again, I think that analogy seems to work. So, I just want to illustrate some of these things. So, we talked about a range of symptoms of some of our point issues. I won't go through all of these, but just to illustrate the point, um, top one, uh, we had an actual operational incident due to third party exchanging data with us, um, um, it was an operational failure. The root cause of that actually when it, when it was examined was that there was a, a lack of a shared data definition between the external third party and internal operation. And in fact that's fixable on its own. But actually if you step back totally, you start to think about well, actually, it's not just that that we haven't got to find. There's a broader suite of data definition that's lacking. Um, somebody mentioned data models. I've got data models in there. I totally believe in those. So, you know, the theme that we should be addressing is getting a, get a grip of our data definitions using business glossaries, etc., etc. The second example was um, we had data released by a particular department, wrong data onto the wrong person outside. Um, that's in its own, there was a response back in the um, in that particular department, total clampdown, nobody could do anything, nobody could send an email, a communication, or send anything out, a total lockdown. That's it wasn't just that department, it was, it was uh, 
was having no, no source of the issue. Really, the underlying root cause was, was to standardise uh, process for release and verification. So actually, there were more people at fault with, with that than just the department of the law. And again, step back, data report verification is just one component part of your data management processes that you need in place. Um, I'll just cover another one again. Um, what about asset management tools? Stop twerking. You know, dig, dig dive into that. And um, it turned out somebody had changed uh, an asset data structure in one of our core systems. Um, and actually, that's fixable. But well, actually, the root cause of that was there was poor impact assessment to do a data change. So, yeah, just general discipline and practices that were done there. So, as you see, that left hand column, just a summary of some of the <coughs> symptoms of some of the point issues that we've seen, some root causes, and actually, you could actually use this to then start to say, well, that's the underlying data management disciplines that we actually need in place. These are the very things that we've been arguing about and we need to have more of. We actually put those in place and start to eliminate and dampen down all these issues coming through. <coughs> and, and actually that is also a separate conversation because um, they say one, one, one particular person. So actually, that looks like a huge cottage industry for you data blocks. You know, this, if we've got by all of this without doing this stuff. Are you just pushing the, the invention of a new cottage industry? Oops. And uh, the response to that was, was no, that's what it looks like in totality. And going back to your three to five year time frame piece, we said we won't do this overnight. That is absolutely the end goal. The tactic to start to eliminate some of those issues. We're starting to say, let's get these small incremental improvements in place, they're things that endure, and then we'll build on that to create that, uh, that discipline. So those conversations uh, resulted in us getting a, an exec sponsor, a business exec sponsor, I would say, that um, And we've had some very fruitful conversations since then. Last year, um, we then started to talk about well, what's achievable. If that's so huge, what's achievable? Yeah, uh, and actually, um, we then started to say, well, how, how do we make this happen? So we got our exec sponsor, he understood finally that the debt governance was not some just broad concept, it was real live actions that we could put in place and he could stop feeling those pain points or get the incidents, you know, the incident pain points. So, carry on from talking to our, our lead sponsor, he then actively worked with us to then get data governance agreed as a strategic priority, National Grid UK. Um, we don't have armies of shopping lists of strategic priorities, these are a handful of strategic priorities for our UK business. The fact that data is up there was, you know, sort of uh, rah-rah for us, it was absolute turning point. Um, so, putting that up there was great, but it didn't just stay there as a strategic statement. The strategic statement has then been translated then into a set of deliverables that we've agreed to support to do that through this year, so we've set a scope. Having set that at the UK level has then meant that the individual lines of business have had to inherit that as an objective into their business plans and their business targets. Having those in the business plans has then embedded those deliverables and uh, contribution to those deliverables in the respective senior leaders' performance objective. Um, performance objectives in, in national grid actually contributes to pay and award at the end of the year. You know, there's, there's a personal agenda in here to make these things deliver. So you can see, yeah, as I say, it's a turning point that exec sponsorship meant all of these things. Down. So, if you go back to the success factors, yes, we have got the sponsorship and the right sponsorship. Um, scope, we've clearly agreed the deliverables that we're going to be committing to over uh, the next uh, year, and then thinking about the longer term. Um, having the, this activity included in the business plans and the business targets means that the um, 
business leads and trying to find the right suppliers and the right team set it up to actually make these things happen. And our performance objectives are all required to be smart, measurable things. So the governance controls the success criteria are really quite clearly laid down in terms of um, what success looks like. So whereas we had previous challenges around capacity and priority, all those things have just disappeared. <laughs> so when it comes down to the key success factor for me in, in our particular organisation, admittedly, the key success factor has been about having an active executive sponsorship up at the top and then these other things fall into place. Um, and that's really why I would put sponsorship as the overriding factor. Um, it is, is the right thing to have. set of examples you had in that table a few slides back and working back through root causes yeah. that sort of identified a variety of different pain points and different sort of disciplines you needed to work on how did you identify which ones to start with prioritize them to, to be fair this was about making the case we'd already be arguing about the case well try to establish the case for data governance and coming at it from the right hand side we need these disciplines in place. Um, actually, we were selective of the right um, symptoms and problem to then say, well, really, it's no brainer, we need the quality of that, you know, we need the change management, all these accountabilities. And as Nicola was talking about, picking off the right thing to, to start off, not trying to say, well, we're going to do the whole lot, it's, it's actually building up on a, on a core base. Um, but this was about it, trying, trying to explain the whole, the whole of the journey and then um, in the dialogue about what we're going to commit to this year, that's actually uh, given us a particular focus. What we have decided to, to focus on was um, giving assurance back to board that we've got the right controls around operational critical data. That's the stuff that uh, keeps our networks live, reliable, resilient, keeps the lights on. You know, so as a minimum, you know, as we said, we've got masses of data. Um, as a minimum, we need to give the assurance back to board that we've got the right controls around that critical data. And then we said, you know, this looks huge. What we really need to do is start to get the right sets of principles in place and then define the minimum standards that we need across the UK operation. Not set the bar too high, but um, actually, <coughs> Having amended the approach, can you say whether it's delivered the outcomes that you want, or is that still too early days? It's still too early, but it's a, it's a sight easier to start pushing your agenda <coughs> with your business leads if the exec can pull into it. So these challenges back about I haven't got the capacity, my director's not judging my performance on this delivery of this, that's gone away because it is it's through line of sight, you know, from the exec priority cascaded down and it's a commitment, you know, they've got the board to answer to. It's not always say it would be a good idea if you got on with this. You know, there's board reports to um, quarterly performance review reports to go on. So there's no school, <laughs> you know, people got it to do. So following on for that is are you now able to push this yourself or is it so much to say you've got to do it because well, yeah, interesting. Julian actually, we took the call and took the call and said fast enough. We said, Can we have this quicker? And so, you know, it, so we've all agreed what we need to do. And so, we're saying, um, we're trying to define the minimum standards and then develop some guidelines for business to, to follow. Um, and challenge back and those people that really gave us a hard time last year and that saying, Well, we will leave this sooner or later, you know. We put out a plan and all that, such as a fragile eye, such as a fragile eye, not until about June. <laughs> it's, you know, so it's just, just a different kind of. Have you made an attempt to um, put money value on, um, say, poor data quality um, or some kind of risk assessment on it um, to, to make yeah, it concrete and, and, and priority? There's two angles on that. Um, we did do a joint exercise with IT in terms of saying what's the, the cost of poor quality data. Uh, I mean, it's not hard to find the fines, you know, that uh, 
similar utilities that are experienced for history courts and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's the risk angle, it's not the financial, it's, you know, we're, we're quite risk averse, so um, it's the risk argument uh, and compliance argument can prove that we're not compliant with uh, regulations. They're, they're the mini arguments as opposed to financial. But then uh, the regulator also, Ofgem, has their own data assurance guidelines, so we have to give the regulator the assurance that what we're reporting back is going through the right control processes to generate the right report. So there's, there's plenty of pressures to drive us all around. One quick question, Jackie. When is the right time you think you're looking back at all this thing to secure the executive sponsor? Do you do that right at the beginning? Do you do some work first and then? We, we tended to get that right at the beginning, but the fact is that most in national grid, most of that leadership function, their background is engineering, uh, data systems is not their home topic. You know, so this argument is probably we've, we've um, carried on years before without all of this, so why now? But we're in a different era. You know, we are more interdependent. And it's those arguments that, you know, start to turn the corner. But I think feeling the pain is, is you know, when it comes to the table discussing that. Right, so thank you very much, Jacqueline.